we are. So, what are we test driving? Well, it's not exactly a test drive. By the way, welcome to Dave's uh, Man Cave, episode of Dave's Garage. Um, yeah, you might notice this doesn't look like the MT-10. Um, you might notice it looks sort of Street Fighter-ish. You might have other visual cues, like Ducati, um, V2. Um, yeah, I, I have poor impulse control. I, uh, I went and did a thing. I was like, you know what, I'm going to go over and look. I've been talking about, well, maybe I should get, I get a Panigale V2 or a Gixxer 1000 or something. Um, now they pay both bikes off and then trade the bike off in and, you know, put a little money down. I you have know, basically almost no payment. Um, and then what little I have, I'll just pay off in a few months. Um, and so I was like, I'm just going to go over and look at the Ducatis. So that was my first mistake. Went over there and uh, looked at the Panigale V2. Looked at the Street Fighter and I went back and forth. And, uh, yeah, so I traded in the MT-10 and got a 2024 Ducati Street Fighter. So, um, expect some Ducati content coming. It's a cool bike. It's, um, you know, it doesn't make as much power. And the other one had heated grips and cruise control. But on paper, on paper, the, uh, the MT-10 definitely has some advantages. Um, this is a smaller bike, smaller motor, less power. It's got stock suspension, although it's show a big piston forks. It's got some good stuff on it. Electronics are great. Doesn't have the heated grips, doesn't have as much wind protection. Not as comfortable, it is more aggressive. <clears throat> on paper, the MT-10 is the better bike, not gonna lie. If you go down the spec sheet, you'd go... <coughs> The MT-10 is going to be more reliable long-term and easier to get parts and service and longer valve intervals and it's got definitely more power and yeah, I know. You're right. But this is a Ducati. <laughs> it's like a Nissan GTR is the better car. My Corvette might be a better car than a Lambo or Ferrari when it comes to quality and value and bang for the buck and its capability is comparable or you know, in some ways. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's... In that case, it's what you can afford, right? Can't afford a Lambo or Ferrari, but I could afford the vet. But if money wasn't the deciding factor, what, you know, what car would I want to go out in the garage and see every morning? Darn tootin' you'd want to see the Lambo or the Ferrari. So, uh, but with the bike, 17.9, well, what's a new RM1 cost, 18.3? ZX 10R is 18.9. A GSXR 1000 is 16.8, but it's 18.299, I think, or something like that. If you want the GSXR 1000R, so this is priced right in there. You can say, well, those are all big, faster bikes. Yes, I'm not as worried about that on the street. When you're ripping around in the mountains, where I spend most of my time, 155 horsepower versus 205. It, yeah, okay, the R10, R1, or even the MT-10 could pull away a little bit on the straights. But when you're in the twisties, there's no difference between them. In some ways, the less powerful bike is actually easier to manage. Um, it's This thing is agile. It weighs a good bit less than the MT-10. I don't know off the top of my head. Have, this is an impulse buy. <laughs> I'd have to go look at the specs and stuff. But I'm thinking that this thing weighs probably 35 pounds less. It's got a good sound for stock exhaust. I'll give it that, too. Got a bit of an induction howl. Sounds good. Quick shifter. Works pretty well. And unlike the Monster, this one will let you downshift auto blip with no throttle. For some reason, Donna's, I have to give it just a little bit of maintenance throttle for it to work on downshift. Don't know why. This one works. Hey, little cows. This one works more like the Yamaha. 
the Yamaha was a little smoother, I feel, but this, you know, I haven't broken in the gear. I got 54 miles on this. I literally got on the bike with four miles. I drove it up the interstate. It's brand new, brand new tires, not broken in. And I'm up here playing in, in, in the mountains a little bit. We're not gonna go too crazy. I had them set the tire pressure where I like, but I gotta scrub them in a wee bit. I think they're super courses. They're either gonna be Rosso 4s or they're gonna be uh, super courses. I know they're definitely Pirellis. They'll be good tires, but you know. When I get tires from Cycle Gear, you know, and I put them on the bike, I tend to wipe them down with brake cleaner or alcohol. These, you know, who knows if someone's polishing the bike, sprayed a little bit on the tires, so I'm always gonna be a little tentative. But, not as comfortable, but it's definitely more aggressive. It's not GSX-R750 or R1 by any means, but it is, that is a big bug in my helmet. It is definitely splitting the difference between the MT-10. It's a little more aggressive than the Aprilia Tuono uh, 1100. Wind protection, non-existent. <laughs> 63. Looked about right too. Um, speedo seems accurate. It was um, going down the interstate at like 85. I felt the wind, but there, it's weird. It's not really turbulent. My head's not bobbing around or any of that stuff, which is interesting. Very, it seems very stable. Now, this is, again, stock suspension. I've not set the clickers. I've not set preload. I haven't done shit other than sign for the bike and then hit the road. I felt bad for Nick because I was like, hey, let's go ride today. Where are we going? I'm like, oh, let's just stop at the Ducati door. I want to look at something. And then we sat there for three hours because <laughs> I'm doing paperwork and getting it prepped and getting my trade in evaluated. I got thir uh, just about 13 on the trade so that was good didn't lose much money on that at all i mean you lose money in the aftermarket shit you put in you never get back for but for a bike that was only 14.4 to begin with granted you paid sales tax but then you get the tax break when you, you know the sales tax back when you sell it or trade it in so honestly i didn't really lose much money on that at all and now i'm getting to play on a brand new ducati street fighter I am a Ducati fanboy at heart. I don't think I'm a snob because I will ride anything. But if I've got a, you know, when I've got the itch for something new, if there's a Ducati that falls into the range of what I want to pay and tickles me in the right spot, I'll take the Ducati. I love Ducatis. I love their design language. I love their philosophy, their race first, you know, race on Sunday, sell on Monday attitude. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's an attitude that pervades everything they do. And that doesn't mean it's better than a Honda. It doesn't mean that it's faster gonna be a Yamaha or a Suzuki. It's not about that. At the end of the day, what bike is quote unquote faster is really kind of irrelevant because unless you're Marquez, or somebody that really knows how to take advantage of it, faster is meaningless. Ultimately, if you have the skill to use it and the balls, is an R1 gonna blow this away? Oh, hell yeah. It won't even be close. Out on a real racetrack with long straights. Now you get two equally skilled riders and you're ripping around Talladega GP or Jennings. I don't know how much difference. The R1 might be marginally faster, but if you're not chasing podiums and there's not a check at the end being made out to you, who cares? Oh, I do love how this thing feels. I've got to relearn, though, the sound of the engine to the RPMs and make sure you know, my gear selections. You know, you ride a bike for a while, you kind of just know 
but it sounds good. Feels good. The brake's phenomenal. I don't think they're Stylemmas, but they are. I think they're Brembo M50 monoblocks with steel braided lines from the factory and everything like that. State-of-the-art electronics, like really good. All right, let's go. Let's, let's run up blood real quick. So my wife will probably be home in like an hour and a half. I think we can run up blood and then cut back through Gainesville and get back to the house. We got some New York strips waiting to be grilled. So, got the Ducati, got a two year unlimited mile warranty. I have roadside assistance from Ducati for two years. So if I break down, I just gotta call that number and then we'll come pick up the bike and take it to the dealer. So that's kinda cool. Oh, when I get this broken in and to get the suspension dialed in, I can tell right now, this is gonna be, the MT-10 will pull it. No, there's no doubt. I'm not trying to make it sound like, oh, the old bike sucks to justify the new one. Don't get me wrong. The MT-10 is a mighty, mighty machine. It's a wheelie monster. And honestly, part of me is already missing it because of that sound and it just has a very good bike. But the way that this one handles, and again, it's not because the other ones handles bad in any way, but this is more like a Panigale. I had the 959, which is the Panigale before the V2. And, um, The way that this thing handles in corners is like a Panigale with bars, which is what it is. And it feels like that. It just wants to arc through the turns. And it just kind of goes where you point it. It's not to the point of it being twitchy. It's not twitchy. But I think if it was any more aggressive, it would be twitchy. So it's kind of on that line probably why they include a steering stabilizer, steering damper, which I will probably upgrade to a better one, but it's there, it's not adjustable. But the way that this thing just wants to go boom, right into a turn, and again, I am not gonna ride this thing hard today. I've gotta learn the bike, <laughs> get the suspension set up, make sure the tires are polish or oil or any kind of stuff from the dealership free. But, uh, so that's what happened today. I'm, I'm a bit sad to see the MT-10 go, but I wasn't, you know, I'm trying to get down to one bike and I was like, you know what? Got my new car, got the new bike. I'm going to see if I can stay with those vehicles for a while and stop going through them so often. And so as long as I don't have any real issues with this bike, maybe I'll keep this one for a few years. It looks the part, it sounds the part. It's definitely a very interesting machine. You know, Donna's got the monsters. I've had monsters in the past. The new monsters are a little bit soft for me. Now they have the SP model of Donna's bike, which is not a bad bike at all. It's comfortable and it's got Olins and a bunch of stuff on it, but it's like 17 or 18,000, maybe 17,000. And for a bike that's making, you know, 114 or 111 horsepower, I'm like, that's an awful lot of money for that level of a bike. Fuck, I hope these clowns aren't going up Blood Mountain. Ugh. Um. Ugh. I was trying to collate my thoughts here. Collect my thoughts. Stock exhaust? Sounds fucking great. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the MT-10. Not a lot of bikes do. But it's this is not a quiet exhaust system. It's deep. It's throaty. 
I'll tell you what I don't like, besides having to actually not have full power until the break-in period ends. Uh, the mirrors, they suck. <laughs> so the first thing I'm doing when I get home, finding me a set of bar end. Actually, not even a set, just one on the left. I like that look and keeping the bike narrower. Ugh, I gotta follow this goddamn guy driving his house up the road. So, go play on Blood Mountain a little bit. As soon as that road splits into two lanes, we're gonna get the f hell around them. Yeah, the seat's not great. It is a bit stiff, it is a bit thin. To be fair, so is the MT-10 seat. The one that's on it now is nice because I paid almost $300 for the comfort seat. Now, when I had the Panigale 959, I got the comfort seat. It made a huge difference. What was nice about it is it was a different material, uh, almost like suede kind of thing. Um, and it was a, like considerably taller. Like to look at it was like two inches taller. When you sat on it, it would compress, but it had so much more foam. It had the effect of um, giving you a little extra leg room. You know, the foot pegs are in the same place, but if what you're sitting on doesn't compress as much because it's got all this extra padding, then you end up not sinking as far. And so it had like an extra half, three quarters of an inch of uh, seat to height, uh, seat to foot peg. Give you a little more leg room, which was nice. These foot pegs feel almost like a Gixxer 750. They're fairly aggressive. When you look at the bike, you're like, oh, naked upright bike. Eh, I'm pitched forward a good bit. Not too much. I don't have any real pressure on my wrists, but I am definitely leaning forward. God, this sucks. I am definitely leaning forward over the front a good bit. Um, and the pegs are kind of high and back a little bit. And we'll see how that feels over the long haul. It feels a little bit like the Tuono. It's a little more aggressive than the MT-10, but not quite as far as like a Panigale would be. It's, an, it's interesting. It, it really is a nice mix of being... It feels a lot like, honestly, like a Street Triple RS 765. It's about that level of aggressiveness. It's aggressive, but it's not extreme. It's what you'd want for roads like we're going to see up here and for the occasional track day, but still perfectly livable as a daily and an all-day ride. I think they've, they've gone a little more aggressive than the MT-10, but not so much that you're like, ugh. I feel like I'm literally on a Panigale and all they did was put a slightly taller bar and rip off the plastics. Oh, this is painful sitting behind all these people. My little Italian stallion wants to play a little bit. 65 miles. Now I'm going to have to observe the 600 mile break in as far as until I can get full power, but I'm not going to wait until 600 miles to start getting on the gas. Once that thing hits 100, we're going to play. Bikes don't need super long. Oh, look at this clown. Sl goes to pass, but then just slams on the fucking brakes. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of the way. He's going over the line. Ugh. Doesn't know what he's doing. Good, get in the other lane, jerk off. Yeah, it just glides around turns, man. Very stable. Play. Just a little bit. I'm not going to let it off the leash yet. again, I just want to make sure that my tires are... Oops, I thought I was in second. So, unlike a lot of V-Twins, a lot of V-Twins have, like, all this grunt down low. This is a Revy V-Twin. And especially in its... Even though it's in sport, it's in a restricted mode. It doesn't seem to like to be under 5,000 RPMs. 
gets a little juddery, so um, we'll need to ride it a bit more like you would an inline four or a triple. And I seem to remember reading that about these motors that yeah, they're V twins or L twins, whatever. But they're L twins that like to rev out to 11,000 or something like that, 11.5, whatever, which is you know pretty high for a almost liter bike size twin. I mean, this is 959 cc's or whatever it is. It's just under 1,000. It's almost a liter bike. And it's got two big old pistons. But it does like to rev. But I can tell it's holding back. I have a feeling that from like 75 or 8,000 to 11, this thing's gonna have, once it's unlocked, it's gonna have a nice, really good top end rush without being, you know, crazy. 155 at the crank. This in stock form, figuring 15% drivetrain losses. It should be around like 130, 132, 133 at the wheel. Low 130s. At 100 horsepower, you lose 15. At 50 horsepower, you lose another seven and a half, plus it's 155, so another one. So basically 15 plus like eight or nine. So you're gonna lose, let's just say 25 horsepower. So that should take you down to about 130 at the wheel, which is plenty on a naked bike like this. I mean, you think about my uh, Street Triple RS, once that was all tuned and everything, we were making, uh, 125 at the wheel So this thing in stock form will have a little bit more torque and a little bit more power Oh, it is waking up a little bit up there Sorry Nick, I'm not trying to hold you up. I'm not I'm just not gonna go balls out on a brand new bike brand new tires Only 69 miles giggity but we're going to play a little bit. Jesus, these tar snakes are fucking horrendous. They keep catching my tires. My whole front end was whipping back. <laughs> yeah, it pulls, but it doesn't seem to want to take off till 8,000. So I think you ride this almost like you ride a 600 or a 750. You got some usable torque. You don't want to go below like 5,000 RPMs. Yeah, 8,000. I can feel it. Just I'm short shifting because I'm trying to not abuse it until I get some more miles on it. But man, these tar snakes, these Pirellis are grabbing those tar snakes. Ah, the trucks that can't maintain the lane. So I'm also just in jeans. I don't have my riding pants or any of my more protective gear, so. It's another reason not to ride like a tool and bin it.
on Richard Russell, but we'll be back in a bit. All right, are we recording again? I believe we are. So, we're at 80 miles. Breaking, uh, you know, going smooth. We're not gonna ring its neck yet. I'm gonna play a little bit. So now we are coming up. Uh, we're on Richard Russell Parkway, which is one of my favorite roads. But I do not want to get a ticket today, so I'm gonna use that as the excuse for why I'm gonna ride a little bit like a pushy and not go full send. I'll tell you, man, there's some good heat coming off the back of this. <laughs> the Fanagalis are known for that, the heat coming off that back pipe that goes underneath because all the exhaust is under the bike and the pipe has to curl around and right under the tail. In the wintertime, it's going to be awesome. Throwing off some nice heat, keep me toasty. But going into summer, probably not going to be as much fun. Sure, we're going to be bugs on the screen. So we're going to play a little bit within reason for a brand new bike with brand new tires. We, we want to have fun, but we do not want to abuse it. I wish another biker would come the other way and let us know if there's cops. Although normally when I get pulled over here, it's they're rolling down the road. I was doing uh, like 113 back there and then slowed down into the 70s for the turn and GSP rolling the other way. Like, uh. Man, this thing is flickable. broken in and unlocked because I really want to rip on it. to like hang off at like a sport bike compared to the MT-10 and not knocking the MT-10 what it was it was actually yeah, it's an amazing bike but I feel like this is gonna have that edge in handling even if it's down on power So the ECU saw enough miles and then deemed me worthy. Gonna have to get a new uh, rear stand. Just realized single-sided swing arm. 
But Panigale 959 was not, it was conventional. Street Triple RS over there. nowhere near the power of the Yamaha but it's got it's got good usable power even in restricted mode it's not slow And they would have slowed down a little bit. And I guess I could have passed them, but I'm gonna be a complete douche. You get some good speed going down a steep hill, and <laughs> you gotta scrub all that speed off for the turns. So. miles I'll get to rip on it a little bit before I get home in my head I just I got to see at least triple digits on the odometer
I'll say it's a little more work on my legs because I think the, my legs are a little bit more back and a little bit more cramped. Now, they weren't cramped riding along. It wasn't like that. But because I'm trying to slide off the seat, I tend to kind of do like little, little mini leg squats as I lift myself up to go from one side to the other. Oops, because my, my legs are much more bent, I can tell it's a little more takes a little more effort. My muscles are feeling it a little more, so I may have to change my riding style a little bit. Try to slide more than picking myself up and depositing myself off the side of the bike like I'm doing. But overall, the handling on this thing is pretty damn good. For, for again, running a bike I've never been on before that's not set up for me, not broken in, not scrubbed in for the tires. I mean, be able to just jump on it and even go this fast and just have fun. It's impressive. The bike, not me. Nothing impressive about me. Let the traction cut in a second there. Take a quick break. And I guess get ready for a bunch of Ducati Street Fighter content on uh, Dave's Man Cave. New toy to play with. And we'll talk to you guys later. All right, Nick, I guess we're gonna park all the way up there in the sun. Sometimes I wonder, Nick think things through. <laughs> He'll be answering this later. Yes, I do, dickhead. Mm. All right. We'll talk to you.